played five. Thanks, Ron, for getting games. us some water. Fourteen I runs. Tell you, I have this was the ordinance game. Or uh, it's going to be under mayor's report. Is right there. But I printed You're off the out there eleven. Just, oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> just get it's two pages long. I mean, that's the worst yeah. feeling. That's <laughs> the worst. No. We threw out four it's different pages. I'll start the beer board in two minutes. So then we had okay. we came I'll back last night. I give the boys out. credit. They really flushed it. They got out, got after it. We yeah. were, it was neck and neck the entire game. We finally had that one good inning from our end of the fifth. We the fourth <coughs> out, and that just kind of gave us some breathing room. Yeah. Still came down to the uh, final play. They had one out, runners on first and third, and down at 10 to 6. Yeah. They hit a little bloop to left field. Our shortstop and the fields collide, uh, but hang on to the ball. Third guy in third thought it was dropped. He heads home. Our kid we picked it up. Alertly throws it to third for the double play game over and got him. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to play at a pitcher's no, 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 we're hosting. Oh, you're hosting, hosting pitching the oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. All, all this stuff's been our, our play, so it's been great on that. So, but the, the, the option was if we lost, we'd go to Carter. I don't know if you've been to Carter High School. I have it's not. in the far northeastern part of Knox County. It's, way, it's almost like right. a field off. I'm going to go to Think change. Yeah. The field is actually, I mean, I, I'm, I haven't been there in years, older so play, but the field is pretty decent, but I mean, the lights are still on, the poles, right. I mean, it's just, you can't it's, see at night. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not, it's not really what we've got, so I mean, we were I went really out to your, uh, to your facility for the first time Saturday. Did you? I had a rotary event there Saturday, yeah. all day, yeah. and uh, I got just a chance to look at the field. It's a yeah. beautiful yeah. complex. Yeah, 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 nice ballpark. Yeah. Very nice, yeah. And we put in, when my oldest son was through, we did the outfield fence. That was our parent project. You yeah. had a three-minute meeting last time. Batting cage building on the left. Well, I like to stretch them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at the, <laughs> the minute. <laughs> it was three minutes. It's <laughs> not easy to fill three minutes, I'm telling you. You're around right there just about. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, three yeah, it's worked minutes. out really well. We've been okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We have uh, probably going to dot uh, reminded me we had a three minute meeting last time. I don't know if we're going to quite do it in three, but you never know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to call to order the uh, May 8th, 2014 Farragut Beer Board. Uh, we only have two agenda <coughs> items. Item number one being the approval of minutes from April 10th of 2014. Are there any comments and, or corrections that any of the board members have? I'll make a motion for approval as written. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yeah, I will need to abstain, Mr. Chair, as I was absent from that meeting. Okay. Thank you. Then uh, the second item is approval for an on for a special event beer permit for Farragut Business Alliance's Go and Glow in the Dark event. Yes, sir. This event is going to be held at the Brooklyn Drive, and they're requesting a special event beer permit. The Towns Municipal Code does govern the special occasion beer permit as below. It authorizes, it's authorized to issue a special occasion beer permit to bona fide charitable organizations and the beer permit can only be for a one 48 hour period and that and their event does fall in that category. The Farragut Business Alliance is a nonprofit organization requesting the permit for Saturday, June the 7th, 2014. The organization is also requesting that the $100 permit fee be waived since the town is a sponsor. Okay. Any comments from our guests? Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions for you. Uh, this is a new event for us this year. You have a little glow-in-the-dark flyer at your <laughs> places. Does it glow-in-the-dark? Um, pardon? Does that glow-in-the-dark? Well, you'll have to take it in your bathroom and close the door and try it. <laughs> Let us know. I won't have a wedding. Well, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Um, what's really neat about this particular event is we it has been sanctioned by the National Get Outdoors Day, which is a national initiative. Get Outdoors Day is June 14th, and this is one of two events in the entire state of Tennessee that's been sanctioned by that organization. Um, so it really has some powder keg potential as far as attendance and um, how far we can grow it. Um, we are also working with the folks in the Great Smoky Mountains to either bring um, live feed of the synchronous fireflies and show it on site or video feed from last year and have the synchronized fireflies on site. All of the activities will glow in the dark. Um, very family friendly, very affordable, um, food, fun, everything glows, uh, activities for pets. Um, we obviously want to keep the parents happy as well, which is one of the reasons we would like to offer beer. <laughs> 
Just out of curiosity, what did you have to do to become a sanctioned event? We called and told them what we wanted to do, and having the fireflies involved really helped hook it. And the fact that it is an outdoor event, and we are focused on kids' activities, and it is a family-friendly friendly event, we were able to um, leverage it, and okay. they were happy to have us. Are there going to be fireflies at this location, or how does that work? There may be fireflies, but they will not be dancing in unison <laughs> like they do in the Smoky Mountain. You're, you're going to have the rebel fireflies. <laughs> at the, I got you. Yes, yeah. th th they will be drinking the beer, so they won't be able to, <laughs> to synchronize. Little biker jackets <laughs> drinking beer, I got you. Be but we will have either a live feed of the synchronous fireflies or video from last year's. So yeah. folks who can't get up to see them, because they're really limited on who they let up there, um, we'll have an opportunity to see what that looks like, which that is really neat. One thing I think suggested, I, I, you know, marketing, I know it's, that's, I've tried to do that before. It's a real challenge to get to actually see them. So I think exactly a nice comment to make that this is probably the next best thing to be in there. Kind of and that's what they're going to tell people once they sell out. Well, if you can't see them here, there's this event in Farragut on June 7th. And we're right in the middle of the peak dance. I think that it's like three days before and three days after is when they're saying it's going to peak. So the date worked out perfectly. And is it true that there are only two places in the world where this happened? East Tennessee and Vietnam. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. Amazing. Hmm. Well, we really are special. We are special. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very educational beer board meeting tonight. I well, good. <laughs> Most Just kind of wanted to give you context. <laughs> I'll second it then. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I'm so Any sorry. opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. And uh, that will bring the conclusion <laughs> Farragut Beer Board for May 8th. Hey, Bob. Well, we got eight minutes. We have to wait to start the meeting. It's too bad we don't have a video to show or something. Yeah. You can <laughs> We need somebody to pray for us. Pray for you. Pray for you. Oh, really? It's very difficult. And now we know we can. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know that we had this in East Tennessee. Yeah. I don't know what did they say. They said that it was a It was a city up in the And it made all the way to Sudan. Well, yeah, I totally have forgotten about this thing tomorrow night. That's scary. That's scary. Mm -hmm. That's scary. That's scary. It's really good. She's yeah. going to have a thing. Um, this is one of your ordinances. I signed it. If you want to take it, keep it. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm sure there will be there'll okay. be applications for it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure be part of it. Several people come out that want to do it. Okay. It's, it's a proposed amendment. Well, tell them this. Okay. So okay. you'll have to give me some. You'll have to vote. Food for thought. Agree. Sure. Sure. I'm, well, I'm not that far from it. Wait All right. Thank you. Okay. 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 Does she? Where that fits in. She's hanging out with Darla? Yeah. Not, not Luke. Darla. Luke's Luke's texting. Everybody. I was reading the other day. I didn't bring that with me tonight. In the Walsh yeah. 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 Where's that tonight? Yeah. 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 This is just an added craft yeah. so yeah. uh, Especially yeah. heavy equipment yeah. operators. But the biggest problem is framers. And uh, yeah. they were saying, you know, so many of the... I'll have to put it in my thing when I go. We were up two nothing in the time. Either we went to work two or most of them go ahead and five. Get them to We come up with one spot. And they were talking about framers. Are getting one more, and they get one back. And, and uh, six inning. This 
asked one builder there, that, okay, you know, big builder, he said he had orders from it was 800 hours. We were kidding. You can only get a million. 300 and some. He says, 30 years of business, I've never turned down a job. So I'm going to turn down a whole bunch of them. I can. We just can't do it. Strange and on during the day. We can get to it. just kind of floated yeah. around. Yeah. yeah, they said they were yeah, going to back on our readers 40, 50 bucks an hour. Fight for both. And just make a shot. Hey, um, I'll, I'll get it done and say, you know, yeah. I remember can years ago, I was probably in my small city so we can do it again. Like I told you, my father has a month of small cities. He's retired now, but he does some. And, you know, last year we did read the Rock Proclamation. And well, you could do that for the June meeting. I won't be here for years ago, told first us, you know, the first meeting in June. The guys that work with their hands. Or whenever Ralph wants to do it. I probably should be at FHR. Oh, at all of us. Yeah. 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 They came about mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah because everybody, yeah. 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 everybody wants to be yeah. uh, yeah. working a yeah. keyboard yeah. and yeah. right. on their mouth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's no button. And they come and we show up down. And it's really a shame because there's a, it's a uh, great business. And the thing I always like about construction, even though I'm not a good anymore, and I end this all the time. Yeah. Hey, like, hey Wellens is retiring. Yeah, that's what I thought. I remember building that. Had a field. Gratification. Started out good. We're all I get done. I look at a screen and go, oh, how's that number look? Oh, looks good. Well, move on. Yeah, it's gone. There's I'm so there. sorry I'm going to miss this. This, uh, this looks so good for I you. I can develop so people, but no that's outside. Uh, Best I get. There's just a lot to be said for driving by things that you build. Up inside, kind of the way the outside. Yeah, I'm proud of Mark. Everything I built too. How many homes have you changed? Uh, I it to We're on job number two. All of the twenty-five. All of the others for multiple projects. Okay. Except they have apparently a new apartment project or something like that. That's secondary. You you primarily just do custom homes. Right now, he's not. You did apartment buildings. I've done apartments. Oh really? But he gave them the apartment. I saw him. Point two and feel like that. Single family homes, home, home. 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 well, track home. Everybody said he was. I'm, I'm kind of at that stage in my life. <coughs> you bring me something nice. Usually they send you well way out of there. Which one is doing off the yeah. complex? Good for you. You could be off. <coughs> you primarily <coughs> work at the right your house. Yeah. You're off. Do you have, do you have an uh, office? I, I can't home? say. Well, okay. I asked my son after this. <laughs> yeah, I just like him. He was fine. He was done. He's no longer the first thing. He's like, do you have got something? Something to do with it. So I'm saying like, well, core guys that are the boys are still making kitchens. I don't have any, I don't have anybody on the payroll. Interesting. Yeah, that's weird. I've never heard of that like that. So he did, uh, you know, got subs up work off the decade. He did a lot of fires. Did your son pitch at all in that game? Or did no, he did everybody uh, pretty well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really, uh, boy, through well. Was, that was the one that got level us. of trust on the this level. So it right. automatically makes it nice. Yeah. 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 It's still, it's still a constant struggle. But I'm just not really interested. Hired a bunch of guys, trying to train a bunch of guys. Lost Tuesday, and there's nobody out there. It was basically more of a where you I remember when I was growing up, they always had the game where you can go on the road. As part of our high school, they had a Votex, and that was known. They had the auto mechanics, auto body. That was nice. And they'd always build a house every year. But yeah. You know, at the end of the school year, they'd auction the house. Yeah. I saw that. Basically, the buy materials all year. We're not doing much of All that stuff was great. Where are you going, man? It's a shame. Traveling for your job? Yes, people with an eight penny nail oh, is, and they look at you, what? <laughs> Are you going to be that? What's a Phillips screwdriver? Like what? What's a Crescent wrench? I don't know what you're even talking about. I mean, they were steamrolling. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, I know what a Crescent wrench is. Who's the problem? Who stopped that? Because she kind of fell apart. It's the next meeting. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. I heard it. Yeah, it really is. Nobody knows how to do anything. Wow. Yeah. As usual. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, as usual. Yeah. No difference on that. Peter's yeah, great. That was, yeah. I was running yeah. Russia. That, that came One of the things was he insisted we were all, everybody it. had to have a trade. didn't matter if you were a doctor, an accountant, a, you know, whatever. We had to also you know, have a labor day, drive a nail, Good. small board. Uh, all right. Plug. According to my uh, 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 clock, to be said uh, it's 7 o'clock. So this is now the Farragut Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. May 8th, 2014. We'll start by rising for an invocation tonight to be given by uh, Danny Matthews of Two Rivers Church. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much just uh, uh, for this community, for uh, just the blessings that you pour out on us at, uh, to be able to live in the town of Farragut. And uh, uh, Father, thank you so much for uh, the leadership that you've risen up, uh, that you've raised up uh, for, for this community. And uh, Father, I just ask that you would come be in the midst of the meeting tonight. Would you just come with your spirit, uh, come with your wisdom, your discernment? 
uh, Father, your unity, and would you lead them. And Father, I pray protection over them as well, uh, and just that you would uh, continue to lead them uh, in leading this community uh, for your plan and your purpose. And we thank you for that. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. First item is uh, approval of the agenda. Is I'll it move okay? For approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Next item is the mayor's report. And um, I do want to say uh, something here, and that is that I hope you noticed, I sure noticed, that the, uh, there was a landmark decision by the Supreme Court this, uh, this past week. And uh, basically it says that what we just did, having someone pray before this meeting, is constitutional. It is not a, a, a violation of the Constitution. That is good news, and uh, I hope it's only a first step. Now. We have a building safety proclamation. It's whereas the town of Farragut's continuing efforts to address the critical issues of safety, energy efficiency, and resilience in the building environment that affect our citizens, citizens both in everyday life and in times of natural disasters gives us confidence that our structures are safe and sound. And whereas our confidence is achieved through the devotion of diligent guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, laborers, and other in the construction industry who work year round to ensure the safety, safe con construction of buildings. And whereas these guardians, dedicated members of the International Code Council, use a government consensus process that brings together local, state, and federal officials with expertise in the building environment to create and implement the highest quality codes to protect Americans in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship, play. And whereas the international codes, the most widely adopted building safety, energy, and fire prevention codes in the nation are used in the mo in, by most U.S. cities, counties, and states, these modern building codes also include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as hurricanes, snowstorms, tornadoes, wildland fires, and earthquakes. And whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of the community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local codes officials, who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings. And whereas the building safety maximizes resi resilience, minimizing risk, the theme of the Building Safety Month 2014 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of build building safety and resilient construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, backyard safety, energy efficiency, and new technologies in the construction energy industry. Building Safety Month 2014 encourages appropriate steps, every, steps everyone can take to ensure that the places where we live, work, learn, worship, and play are safe and sustainable, and recognizes that countless lives have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by the local, state, and state agencies. Whereas each year, in observance of Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider projects to improve building safety and sustainability at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential, serv essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, Ralph McGill, mayor of the town of Farragut, Tennessee, does hereby proclaim the month of May 2014 as Building Safety Month, according Accordingly, he encourages our citizens to join with their communities and participate in participation in the Building Safety Month activities. <laughs> Shall I come? Do I? Shall I come up and present it? Sure. Johnson, our fire marshal. He didn't want to read all of it.
I appreciate you all podium. recognizing this. There's a podium. podium. So we can get you on the record. Yes, sir. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, board members recognizing this. Uh, both the uh, president and the governor have done similar proclamations, and uh, I thought it was a good opportunity to, uh, to, to remind us of uh, Building Safety Month. Uh, each week basically has a, uh, uh, a separate theme, and uh, if you have any particular questions or the public does, please contact our office. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, for all you all do. For our town. Yeah. Next item is Citizens Forum. Anybody signed no up? No one has signed up. All right. Next is approval of the minutes from April 24th. I'll move for approval. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we move to ordinances. Uh, we have two uh, that are on first reading, both. Um, First one is Ordinance 14-04, Ordinance to amend the Ordinance 86-16, Zoning Ordinance of the Town of Farragut, and amending Ordinance 3-10, uh, updating the computer-generated zoning map. Um, I'm Mark Shipley. I'm just glad I didn't have to read that proclamation either. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate Allison doing that and Dan being here for that. Um, this is actually a relatively simple uh, item. It's uh, it's basically just comprehensively updating our computer-generated zoning map. Um, back in 2003, we transitioned from the uh, the hand-produced uh, old form of cartography uh, zoning maps that were. Uh, contracted through the state to produce uh, to a computer generated zoning map um, and uh, and that obviously is periodically updated um, basically the purpose of this particular uh, ordinance 14-04 is to comprehensively update to the zoning map it has not been comprehensively updated since 2010 uh, there have been a few rezonings not that many uh, since that time uh, mainly we were waiting for the uh, the flood insurance rate maps to be finally uh, released uh, through FEMA and approved um, and that's incorporated in this particular update um, as you may recall uh, we approved the new uh, firm maps and and modified the floodplain ordinance back in uh, May 2013 to reflect the new flood studies and uh, modified some of the language in our, in our zoning ordinance to address that as well. Uh, and this basically is just uh, reflecting that, those maps on our zoning map. Um, the other uh, changes that are proposed as part of this ordinance is uh, to, of course, reflect the rezoning since 2010. There have only been seven. Um, and the other uh, modification was to uh, rezone the town's park property on McPhee Road. Uh, it was agriculture uh, to open space park, which is consistent with our other parks. Um, everything else is the same. There are no other changes. Um, that is, um, that's basically what the ordinance uh, is is accomplishing. Uh, at the planning commission meeting last month, uh, the commission recommended unanimously to approve the resolution that would approve uh, ordinance 14-04 and the staff recommends approval i thought it was interesting mark to note that up until 2003 we had a hand-drawn zoning map of well it. somebody drew that wow. yeah it was it's amazing <laughs> yeah the old forms of cartography I, it yeah what uh, yeah they, they had it on mylar and you know it, but it was yeah, it was involved to try to change it much easier now. You kind of get spoiled with. Uh, I know when I took cartography at, at UT, it was it was all hand drawn stuff because that was a long, long time ago. But uh, <laughs> uh, but it's nice to have it electronic like this. It's very easy to update, um, and uh, you know that's what we'll do as as rezonings come before uh, 
the board and get passed. Uh, but that's that's all this particular ordinance is is accomplishing. I'll move for approval. Second. It's pretty controversial, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank Next you. ordinance then is or, uh, ordinance fourteen dash oh five ordinance to amend the text of the Farragut Municipal Code, Title Eight, Alcoholic Beverages. Chapter 2, Beer. Yes, sir. Over the past year, the town staff has okay. received numerous inquiries about the expansion of the current beer ordinance. The Board of Mayor and Aldermen have conducted two workshop sessions since November of 13, 2013 to discuss the possible changes. At this time, the town offers an on-premise permit, off-premise permit, and a special occasion permit. Businesses that currently qualify are restaurants, hotels, and convenience, convenient and grocery stores. After much discussion and research, there are two major changes to this ordinance. The first one is to add two additional classes of beer permits. The first one is Class 2, which is an on-premise permit for other establishments, making application for a permit to sell for the consumption on the premises, which do not qualify or do not wish to qualify for the Class 1 on-premise permit, but which, but which otherwise meet all the other regulations and restrictions in this chapter shall apply for the Class 2 on-premise permit. The other class is class four, which is on-premise where beer is sold for the consumption at a tavern. A tavern should mean the business establishment whose primary business is, or it, primary business is to have sell a beer to be consumed on the premises. There shall be no more than a total of three taverns located within the corporate limits of the town of Farragut. The next large revision is the revision to the adult entertainment definitions and prohibited conduct or activities. The changes to the current ordinance are highlighted in your packets and um, our Town of Farragut Fire Marshal Dan Johnson has an amendment to the proposed ordinance and he is going to review that with you right now and that has the paper that I handed you earlier has the wording for that amendment. Uh, Dan Johnson Fire Marshal for the Town of Farragut. <coughs> uh, the, the amendment that you've been presented with uh, affects only the class four, the taverns and uh, I spoke with uh, the town administrator about this uh, as a clarification and to assist in the in the process of someone looking at at this type of application just for this type of situation um, I request that you consider uh, adding the following which would be uh, provide throughout with an approved supervised automatic fire sprinkler system installed in accordance with NFPA 13 uh, our current uh, adopted life safety code does specify that any establishment uh, that has a drinking type situation and has basically live entertainment discotheque nightclub similar settings uh, be sprinklered at a, a zero level ordinance um, that does not mean that it would affect any retail situation that doesn't have uh, a seating capacity where they could could have live entertainment and those type of things but but uh, if you remember back in 2003, we had a situation in a uh, assembly occupancy, served alcohol, had live music, about 4,400 square feet. We killed 100 people in Massachusetts. So uh, this would be an effort to, uh, to try and avoid that and clarify this at the beginning so that if an applicant came in and looked at our requirements, they would know clearly, okay, this is, these are the items I need to meet and this is one of the specific items. Uh, the, uh, the, area that I have concern that might cause confusion is in theory uh, I think as, as we spoke about David somebody might be able to squeeze through and meet the requirements and initially a non sprinklered building the way the ordinance is currently presented to you without this uh, amendment <coughs> and then could come in at a later date and would be in violation if they started doing some type of live entertainment which a lot of those type of venues tend to have on weekends or, or uh, you know, certain nights during the week. So that's what, uh, that, that's kind of where the amendment came from. And uh, I'd like to address any specific questions that you may have relating to that. Well, Dan, my first question is, we don't currently have any of this type of establishment in town, do we? No, sir. So this is a kind of a precautionary. Um, this is, yes. Look forward looking. Yes. So I was trying to be progressive on this and and uh, I, I've, I've looked over the ordinance um, with uh, with Allison and this is the only real concern that I came up with from 
from a building and, and fire standpoint. I've also talked with uh, the uh, senior uh, building codes officer, Mr. Householder, and he had a, a similar concern with it. He was unable to be here tonight, but he wanted to express the same, uh, the same concern. I think it makes a lot of sense, and I think we ought to incorporate it. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, yeah, I would, I would agree, and we appreciate your uh, looking into it and making it possible for us to know. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. So, what's the motion? Well, I'll, I'll make uh, a motion to approve Ordinance 14-05 on first reading. And you'll need to add that amendment. And with the addition well. of the amendment. Class 4. Class 4, Section 8-218. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that, that takes us to business items. First is approval of expenditures from the Farragut Folk, Folk Life Museum account for the purchase of auction items related to Admiral Farragut or American history. The museum is always looking for artifacts um, that might enhance their collection. And they've purchased a few things over the years, but they've been saving their money. And um, a collection that we've known about for quite some time and actually had on display here at the town hall a few years ago um, is going um, to auction. and. So what we would like is your approval to spend up to $40,000 of the museum's money. This is money that they have raised through donations, memberships, contributions, memorials. Um, but it is housed in the town's accounts and so needs to follow our purchasing policy. Um, they've been saving this for many years and they just keep adding to it each year and use it for a few display needs some from time to time and a few artifacts that they've bought. This would be the biggest um, purchase. We, we have a list of items that they're interested in. We do not have the um, order of the auction yet. Won't have that until a couple weeks before the auction. At that time we'll sit down with the subcommittee and prioritize what they want to you know really push for and then um, town staff will be doing will be working this auction and we'll be doing it for, uh, by telephone and computer the auction is in uh, Cowan's auction in Cincinnati and it's on Friday uh, June 13th can you give us a flavor maybe of an item or two of the kind sure. of that would be really special and added to uh, our museum? Thanks for asking. Um, one of the items is an admiral's flag that was actually presented to Admiral Farragut when he was uh, made admiral. It's a four-star flag. One of the items is a lantern from the Hartford. Um, there's a Civil War Marine drum. While that's not Farragut, it's Civil War, and we were very interested in that. There's a fire bucket. Some of this was here. I believe those two items especially were here during um, when we borrowed Mr. DuPont's um, collection. He's been a great friend to the museum and uh, was, has been keeping us involved in you know what's going on here. So um, but there's lots of opportunities and and we'll do our best to get get something that's really interesting or a few things that are very interesting at a good price. We hope we won't be spending all that money but we want to have that ability or the museum committee wants us to have that ability if we need to. So is this going to just be a drawing account for the museum from the general fund that we're uh, uh, they're not going to have it drawn out separately? That it's not the general fund money. It's money that they have um, gotten over the years from when they sell memberships and get mo and memorials and and uh, donations and when people come into the museum and they put a couple bucks in they've been saving this for years and years and it just keeps growing so that's that money it's housed in the town's account but it's not a general fund account right, right? it's okay. actually housed it's in our big bucket of money but it's set aside something like a savings account it's under our liabilities on uh, on our financial statements 
and it says museum savings account. And we also have one for the um, gift shop as well. But most of the time, the, the museum one is a lot bigger than the gift shop, but it's just housed in the liabilities. So that's always kind of pulled out of our our balance, but it's there reserved for them. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I'll move for approval. Second. I can't think of a better ha a place to house those articles, so I go I, I go with it. Let's get them. Yeah. <laughs> so all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, and we'll give you a full count. Good luck. Right. <laughs> Next item is approval to close portions of Brook Lawn Drive for the Go and Glow in the Dark event, to be held June seventh. Yes, sir. The Fairgate Business Alliance is partnering with the National Get Outdoors Initiative combined with the Celebrating Outdoor Assets <coughs> in Our Own Backyard. The purpose is to get outdoors and celebrate synchronized fly fly fireflies of East Tennessee. Activities, food trucks, and events will glow in the dark. The event is anticipated to have as many as 2,000 participants. The Business Alliance is requesting that portions of Brooklyn Drive be closed for the event as shown in the Exhibit A. The road closure will be from 8 a.m. until 10.30 p.m., and mainly those hours are for setup. Brooklyn Drive closures and portions of the parking lot will be used for vendor and event tents as well as portable restrooms. Patrons will be able to access all businesses in the Brooklyn Shopping Center during the road closure. Traffic control will be provided by the Knox County Sheriff's Office as well as Rural Metro for any medical emergency services. The motion is to approve the road closure on Brook portions of Brooklyn Drive from 8 a.m. till 10.30 p.m. for the Go and Glow in the Dark event to be held June 7, 2014. Um, I'd like to note a minor change to your, the, the diagram you have in front of you. I tried to pencil in the change. Um, in front of Little Jim, the, the barricade will actually be once you come past the Little Jim, so folks can still get to that. Um, I would also note that Colin Cummesty has walked this site with us um, and helped us develop this map, so we know that we have addressed ingress and egress uh, for emergency purposes and for the businesses that customers need to get access to. Kroger is on full board. They're full, fully supportive of the event. They actually offered us the opportunity to use their special event sign so we could have additional signage. Um, they're really excited to have us in their backyard. They'll be selling tickets. They'll have banners inside. So Kroger has blessed the event. Um, the codes folks have blessed it, and now we need you to bless it. Could you uh, touch base again and, and share with us about the parking for this event, uh, kind of clarifying when we're talking about a road close, we, where would people park? That uh, would mm -hmm. be the obvious. Uh, people can park in the Kroger parking lot. As you see, they can park in the old Kroger parking lot where we normally have Taste of Farragut. They'll also be able to, um, the greenway that runs right, right behind will uh, enable some additional parking um, up at Town Hall, at the post office, at the, the other businesses on this, the bank that close, uh, will be closed during those evening hours. Um, we've talked about, um, based on advanced sales, if we need to, possibly shuttling from the high school as well. That's a backup plan and we'll assess that um, if we have a lot of advanced ticket sales. We'll have two entries, uh, admissions. One will be um, towards Kingston Pike and the other will be towards North Campbell Station Road. So people can get in either way. For the vast audience that missed this earlier, that's watching the TV version of this now, if you could maybe just put in a plug for what Glow in the Dark is tied to the fireflies and how all that works. And, uh, and Absolutely. Um, it's our first annual event. Um, it is called Go and Glow in the Dark. The GO stands for Get Outdoors, which is a national initiative uh, that's being held June 14th. Our event is on June 7th. It has been nationally endorsed as a partner event with the Get Outdoors Initiative. Um, we're one of two events in the state of Tennessee um, that, uh, that has received that designation, so we're very excited. Um, it is a family-friendly event. One of the other big draws is that we will either be showing a live feed of the synchronous fireflies from the Smoky Mountains or video feed from last year, depending on how the mechanics come together. But either way, folks will be able to come to Farragut and enjoy um, the synchronous fireflies dancing um, because it's so limited, uh, the number of people that can actually get up into the mountains to see that. A family-friendly event, $5 admission, and then uh, ticketing within for activities. Um, every activity will glow in the dark. Uh, there will be a glow-in-the-dark rock climbing wall, a glow-in-the-dark graffiti wall, uh, pet activities, 
um, uh, glow-in-the-dark rubber ducky races, um, just really fun, family-friendly things. Um, one of the things the business community has really embraced is we are allowing vendor booths, but it's not going to be your traditional ben vendor booth. It's not going to be come set up a table, hand out your paper. It's going to be come set up a table, think of a really cool glow-in-the-dark activity that will engage the public with you, that gives you the opportunity to meet with your public one-on-one, -on -one, but still provide some entertainment for the guests. So we're, we're really excited. I will tell you, this event by far has attracted more sponsorship dollars than any event we've done that's great fantastic Very good. how big will the screen be <laughs> we've got multi we've got multiple screens best buy is one of our sponsors and they'll be providing uh three screens we also have waste connections coming and they have a tailgating truck with screens um, TDS is possibly bringing a screen and Coca-Cola is possibly bringing a screen so there will be at least three maybe as many as six different sizes <laughs> we'll also be running educational things about why you should get outdoors childhood obesity other things going on in the smoky mountain national park so there will be an educational component too but we're going to try and make it a lot of fun well i'll make the motion that we approve closing the portions of brooklyn drive from 8 to 10 30 p.m for the go and glow in the dark event to be held on june the 7th 2014 and I'm grateful for all your hard work in making this happen. Second. All in favor, say aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 <laughs> may, may I? I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to interrupt. The, I need to clarify that that road closure needs to happen from 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. on the 7th till 1 a.m. on the 8th. Because the event goes till 1030, and we're going to need to tear it down without getting run over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, uh, last item under business items is interlocal agreement for the employment of a public management fellow between the state of Tennessee and uh, municipal municipalities of Alcoa, Farragut, Maryville, and Oak Ridge, and the University of Tennessee. Thank you, Mayor. This, uh, this will be the first time that the town of Farragut has in, embarked on a fellowship program uh, with the uh, Municipal Technical Advisory Service, which is MTAS. Uh, we utilize MTAS for a lot of different things here at the town of Farragut, from uh, legal advice to management advice, financial assistance. Uh, they, they help out cities all across the state in a, in a wide variety of things. One of the things that has been very successful uh, through UT uh, and as well as MTAS is a fellowship program that they uh, started probably six or seven years ago now where they do a two-year fellowship program. So this is an individual that has graduated, uh, most of the time recently graduated from a uh, MPA program, a Master's in Public Administration program, is looking to get into local government uh, as a city manager or wants to be some type of city manager in the future. And uh, so each of the cities that uh, are on your, uh, or as part of this agreement, uh, Alcoa, Farragut, Maryville, and Oak Ridge, would all share this fellow for about three months uh, a year. So we'd get the fellow for three months in, in the FY15 fiscal year, and then they would go off to other cities and work, and then they would come back in the FY16 fiscal year. Uh, to get them valuable experience in each municipality, uh, see how different city managers work, different cities work, and also different departments. Uh, and that also helps the cities get uh, some great work done in those three months that they're here, various projects. I've got several uh, from a budget standpoint, from I know community development could certainly use them as well. Uh, and we'll just have to figure out the timing on when they would be here. But the, uh, the contract calls for them to be, they would be a UT um, um, employee uh, so we would contract for their services over the three-month period the contract cost for FY 15 would be eleven thousand five hundred and twenty dollars and for FY 16 uh, it would be no more than twelve thousand ninety six dollars for that year uh, and this is obviously a temporary thing just for the two-year period and, uh, and depending on if we think it's successful and want to do it again and if they find a new fellow uh, in the future too so with that I would uh, would just ask for your approval of this uh, recommendation tonight you know I, I think it's a great opportunity for us I, with uh, you know there's there's some similarities between uh, oh my mind just went blank what, what's the other organization we've had the, it's it that's a volunteer Miracle. Uh, thank you America Miracle. and that this is a much higher level than that but what a, what a great <coughs> thing for us to be involved in and uh, I'd like a, to make a motion that we approve this I'll second it 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Town Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mayor. A couple things tonight. Um, one is next Friday from <coughs> 1 to 7 is the Art and Flower Show that is going to be taking place here at the Town Hall. It's going to be a great mixture of beautiful art pieces that have been created along with floral arrangements. I know it's going to be jury. That's a, it's a huge event here, and uh, hope hopefully the public can get here. But I know we have over 100 pieces of art and uh, 40 different floral arrangements, and pretty much the whole town hall is going to be covered in uh, flowers and artwork. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing that next week. Um, also, uh, next week we'll be uh, heading to the ICSC convention, uh, May the 17th through the 20th. Uh, we have a contingent uh, from Farragut that's going to go out there and uh, – try to work on the retail community and get some more business here. So uh, we're looking forward to that and uh, hopefully have a successful trip. So other than that, I can answer any questions, but that's all I have tonight. I, would, right. ju I would just like to make the comment about the award that we've won for our financial report and, r and commend Allison and all the other people that were involved in making this happen. I think it's a real credit to our town. Thank you. I would 100% agree, <laughs> and we will actually be getting a certificate for that uh, here in the mail soon. And when we do, we'll uh, we'll we'll make another bigger deal out of it. Uh, we also were uh, named as the eighth most affordable city in Tennessee. I wonder who's who, who did that one? Do you know who did that survey? Or Movado uh, did that survey recently. There were. Uh, six communities i believe in west tennessee that uh, were all lower cost and i think a lot of that just has to do with the area in general and then i believe us and knoxville were both on that list all right no attorney no report thank goodness <laughs> we are adjourned <laughs> so when we see him we should all cringe that's right. When he comes, <laughs> we're in trouble. Yeah. For all the women, a happy Mother's Day Sunday. You too. So we just added another employee. What's that? We just added another employee. Have a good trip, Ralph, and a safe yeah. trip.